Ken, we're going to talk today about an important topic. I think this will be really interesting and relevant to a lot of women, and that is how to get to the second date and more. So before we dive into this, tell me a little bit about why you chose this topic. Well, it's one of those interesting things, right? Because obviously our topic of the, the overall event here is, is ready for the right guy. And a lot of people are, are ready for the end, right? They, they're, I'm ready to be in that relationship that lasts forever. But they don't even know what they want to do as far as dating. They're not even comfortable dating. And we kind of got to take care of the front end before we can get to the back end. Good point. So that's this topic. Yeah, that's a very good point, taking care of the front end. So we're going to be talking about the front end today, right? Yep, getting those dates. Okay, so um, getting to the second date, like you said, I think there is a lot of focus on the on the end game, on meeting and attracting the right person and having that partnership. And one of the things that, you, that I've heard you say is that women need to stop being safe, S-A-F-E, when mm -hmm. dating. So tell us about that and tell us where we're going to go with that conversation. Yeah. Um, so obviously, I don't mean not being physically safe. What I'm talking about is, is S-A-F-E is an is a acronym for satisfied avoiding failure every time. So most of the women I talk to they're just happy to make sure they didn't screw up the date. They just want it to be safe, right? I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to mess it up. I don't want to be too this or not enough that. So you're, you're constantly trying to manage what's going on. And if you're doing that, you're not really showing up. So it's like this lowest common denominator, low vibration version, version of you trying to be acceptable trying to be like, oh, maybe if I don't say anything too out there or do anything too weird and I'm just friendly and I'm nice and I smile and I, I have a good conversation, I'll get the second date. But what that's going to lead to is somebody going, yeah, it was a nice date. Nice dates don't get second dates because it's a nice date. I can find a nice date all over the place. Everybody wants the date that really has, wow, there's something there. She's exciting. She's interesting. And if you're playing it safe, you won't get there. So when you're playing it safe, you're actually shooting yourself in the foot. Mm. This is a really interesting idea. So give us an example or two, if you will, Ken, of what it looks like to be playing it safe. Sure. Um, not showing that you're having a good time. Not wanting to be, because you're afraid you'll look desperate or you'll look too enthusiastic. And so you're like, you know, this is nice. It was good meeting you, so on and so forth. Well, chances are that guy is going to go home and be like, I don't think she was really interested. I'm not going to ask her out again. Because you didn't show that enthusiasm, right? So he's sitting there going, nah. And you got to remember, from a man's perspective, every time we contact you, whether it's for the first date, second date, whenever, we risk being rejected. So if you're being very, like, yeah, that was nice. Thanks. I had a good time. He's probably not going to risk that rejection again because he didn't feel like it went that well. You, you, you told him it was, it was nice. So nice is going to shoot you in the foot. Now this doesn't mean it's a performance. <laughs> this doesn't mean you go in there, look at how amazing I am. I could juggle and I could do this. You know, that, that would be overload. Right. But really bringing the true you forward and realizing that either they're going to really like it or they're not. Either way, you have your answer. Wow, this is something that has a future or it doesn't and we're clear about that. It keeps you from falling into that unknown of, well, why didn't I get a second date? That there's, I'm really, I, I think there's a lot there. Well, did you talk about that? No. Well, then how would he know that there's a reason to come back, that there's more? As far as he knows, that is you. Mm -hmm. So this is a way that we think we're trying to control the situation so that we don't screw it up. You already are on the date. Success. Quit trying to manage the first date that you're already on. Enjoy the first date. If it turns out that it leads to something more, great. But it's not going to lead there by holding back, by trying to make sure you don't screw up. That's screwing up right away. As soon as you're trying to make sure you don't screw up, you've already screwed up. 
So I think some of this has to do, Ken, with what happens so often, and I'm sure it happens for men too, but we're talking to women, and that's the being in your head so much that you can't really be present, you can't really be in the moment, you can't really relax, you mm-hmm. can't really be really tuned in even to the other person because you've got so much chatter going mm-hmm. on in your head. And for women, I think a lot of times this looks like, you know, does he like me? Do I like him? Does he like what I'm wearing? Oh, I should have wore this. Oh, my hair's going funny. Oh, I got a zit. I mean, whatever. Yeah. It can be anything. Or if I order this, he'll think I'm a pig. Or if I eat this much, he'll think I'm a pig. Or if I don't eat this, he'll think I don't like it. I mean, it can be a million things. And I know because I've been there, that chatter can just be like, like almost like it's screaming in our heads and it makes it next to impossible to just relax and be in the moment. I think that's at least a part of what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, what ends up happening is because we have that chatter and those doubts going on, oh, why he didn't say I look great. Maybe I don't look so good. What's wrong? Is there something wrong with my outfit? It's, you know, whatever. What ends up happening is it lowers our vibration. So now we're not showing up as a high vibration who we really are at a core. We're showing up as this cautious, doubtful person. And guess what? A high quality man is not looking for a low vibration woman. Mm -hmm. He's looking for something that is high quality, showing up, having confidence, all those pieces that aren't happening when we're listening to the chatter. So this is another way that we undermine things. And another way you do it is if you walk into the date, with your X filters up. And what I mean by X filters is, oh, I got to watch out to make sure he's not like my ex. Mm -hmm. He doesn't do things like my ex. Oh my God, he looks like my ex. Oh, he just did that. My ex always did that. When your X filters are up, you're not even seeing that guy. You're seeing how can he be like my ex so I can run out of here screaming. That's basically what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You're trying to find a reason it won't work unconsciously, but you're doing it. Mm-hmm. And I know everybody listening has been there. You came back from a day well, he did this, that my ex always did that. I mean, that's a red flag. Why are you looking for how he's like the person you're not interested in? Mm-hmm. But this is what we do. Like you said, it's that chatter, right? This is trying to avoid repeating something. Mm-hmm. That's not helpful because you're just going to find more of the things you want to avoid. What do you want? to come from a date. Mm-hmm. And again, so many people have had so many bad experiences. This is where your focus is. Yeah. But also why you're having all the bad experiences. You're creating them because your focus is on what you don't want. Yeah. Yeah. It's such an important point, Ken. And it's almost like going in looking for something wrong, going in looking for something as to why it won't work or why this person is wrong. And, and we're not, of course, saying not to be aware. We're not in any way saying not to pay attention. But if you're going in really looking for, if you've got the X filter on, or if you're really looking for a problem, you can probably find it. Oh, you'll definitely find it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You will find the thing you're afraid of. Because mm-hmm. that's what your attention's on. It's how our brain is wired. So what I recommend that, that ladies do so you can get the second date and beyond is actually date safer. And yes, this is another acronym, but what that stands for, I'll just take you through the different pieces. So the S and the A are showing up self-confident and authentic. Mm -hmm. This isn't walking in, listening to the chatter. This is going, Hey, we already do however many steps it took to get to this first date. And now I'm walking in the door and we're having a date, which by the way, I want to be clear about something. If you met somebody online, for example, and you have coffee, that's not a first date. That's the first time you've met. Mm -hmm. So don't decide this is a date. It's not. You're just meeting for the first time in person to see if you want a date. So take the pressure off that meet. And just like if you met somebody randomly, you wouldn't be getting all nervous and stressed out. Would you still show up as your best self in that moment? Yeah. But it doesn't mean it's a formal date. You're just meeting that person. So first thing there, that is not a first date. That's a first meeting. Then you find out if you want to date. So you're on that date, right? Right. Hello. 
He didn't ask you out because he wasn't interested. Embrace the confidence that comes from this guy was interested in me. Mm -hmm. No. Do you know where it's going? No. Do you know the whole picture and what's going to happen? Are you going to marry and have kids? No. All you know is, wow, this guy, out of all the people he could have asked, he asked me out. And then we had great conversation or great dialogue back and forth online. And then we're actually meeting. These are all successes. You should be flying high when you walk in the door. This is exciting. And that leads to the second piece is have fun. Have fun on your date. If right. you're going in there dreading it, don't bother. Yeah. If you have even a thought going through your head, this will probably be like the last one. Don't bother. If you're not showing up going, I'm totally expecting to have a great time and have a great meal and meet somebody wonderful. Do I know what's going to happen? No. But I'm expecting to enjoy myself, to have fun while I'm out there. So many women have lost the fun in their dating. It's now a process. I just got to find somebody. It's, it's a test. You better measure up. That's not fun. It's not fun for you and it's not fun for them. Chances mm -hmm. are, if I'm sitting there as a guy and I realize I was just being assessed, I know nothing about you, A, and B, that's not fun. Why would I want to sign up for another one? Because as far as I know, you're going to keep doing that. It's just going to be like going for a job interview and they go, okay, so uh, we, we enjoyed meeting you. We want to have you back in. What's happening? You're just going to be assessed further. You're setting them up to go, why would I want to do that again? So have fun. Enjoy yourself while you're out there. If you're not doing that, don't go. Just be honest. If you're not in the spot for that, be like, you know what? I'm just not ready. That's okay. But don't go through it like it's this job. That's never going to get you to the next, next level. I mean, it might get you to some guy who's just interested in sex because he doesn't really care. He's just hoping he can get you into bed. He'll put up with whatever. He's got a different agenda. But if you're really looking for true partnership, it's not going to happen if you're showing up going, well, I guess I'll go on this date. And some of you may be sitting there going, who would do that? You. That's who would do it. You've done it on some form. Maybe not the way I'm expressing it, but you've done it. Where you were cautious going, probably won't work, but I haven't had a date in a while, so I may as well go. There's no point. If you're not showing up having fun, don't go. And I mentioned this earlier, and, and one of the ways you can sabotage things is the E is for excited. Show your excitement. Let him know you had a great time. That's not desperate. That's honest. That's enthusiastic. That's enticing. A man goes, wow, awesome. I was talking with a guy once, and he said to me, he goes, I took this gal out and he goes, honestly, I was, I was very likely going to be leaving the area soon. So I didn't really expect it to go anywhere, but I was like, well, I'm still going to date. And he went out and they had a great time. And he's like, it was very simple. We didn't do anything fancy. And at the end of the date, she said, wow, this is really one of the funnest dates I've ever been on. And he said, in my mind, I instantly thought to myself, wow. I might be able to make this woman happy. And he ended up pursuing her and they started dating. He changed his moving plans and they're, I believe they're married now. But he said that was the key was she was excited about what we had done. And I was like, wow, I want to have somebody I can make happy. So show your excitement, let him know that He's moving in the right direction. Doesn't mean that he got everything perfect, that it was the Prince Charming date, but it means, yeah, I can appreciate that. I can show my excitement for what we did. And the R in safer is be receptive. If you're not receptive to him contributing to you, whether it be opening a door, whether it be paying you a compliment, and I hear women go, oh, who would let him open the door? Lots of women. This is why men have stopped doing it. They've been told they're gonna to get reprimanded for doing it, like they're insulting you in some way. So then they go, well, why would I risk that again? If everybody's gonna just yell at me or give me a dirty look, why would I put myself in that spot? Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, culturally, women have been trained out of receptivity, which is a natural quality of the feminine, because there's this belief that, oh, if you're receptive to what a man offers, you're either A, weak, or B, He's insulting you by saying that. 
He's trying to get a door. Really? Do you think that we think you can't open doors? No, we know you can open doors, but why should you? We can get that door for you. There's no reason you need to open that door. It's a way that we can contribute. Same thing with a man offers a compliment. I can't tell you how many times I've watched a woman sidestep a compliment. You look great. Oh yeah, I didn't, I, I got the stain on it. I couldn't get it out of it. All of a sudden you're dismissing the compliment. You're, you're deflecting it. And men don't offer compliments lightly. Yes, are there players that schmooze you? Yeah, and that's pretty obvious. But most men, they only say things they really stand behind. So it's like, wow, that looks fantastic. He means it. Don't act like, oh, whatever. No, he means it. Receive that. Because if you don't, if you're not receptive, guess what? He's going to stop wanting to offer you things because you don't receive them. It's just like, imagine if you had somebody, I don't know, let's say you had a, a, somebody in your life who was sick and you went over to help them. And you're like, oh, what can I do for you? Oh, really? You brought me that kind of soup? Oh, why did you do that? And they're not receptive to what you're offering. Are you going to keep offering? Probably not. Same thing here. You want to be receptive. It's one of your qualities. It's the nature of the feminine is to be receptive. The masculine is a provider. Let him provide things. It doesn't mean you can't do it. It simply means, hey, I want to contribute in this way. Now, you may find that that's not a way that works for you and you have that discussion down the road. But even if that's the case initially, like, oh, I hate it when guys do that. But he didn't know that. It's your first date. So right. you're like, thanks, I, that, that's very nice. And then if you go forward, you can let him know later, hey, just so you know, that first date when you did whatever, actually, that's not something I really enjoy. But I know I can tell you something that I would always make me happy. And now you replace it with something else. So you set him up to win. But when you're doing this, when you're dating safer, all of these things are adding to why I would want to date you again. If I'm the guy sitting across the table. You're showing up self-confident. You're being authentic. So I really get to know you. You're, you're being fun, you're showing your excitement, and you're being receptive to what I'm trying to show up and do well, I'm going to want to spend more time with you. If you're not, if you're being safe, just trying to make sure you don't screw it up, listen to all those voices in your head, trying to make sure it's like, okay, well, I want this to turn out fine, he's probably not going to call. And you'll be sitting there going, but how does he know? because he thought you were bringing your A game. He thought that was it. And when you don't bring it, he doesn't know that. He doesn't know that you're holding out because you want to not screw up the first date hoping to get a second one. Most guys don't know that that's how you're approaching it. So bring your A game, bring it, be confident, be excited, be fun, be receptive. I promise you, you will be moving down that path very quickly when you do that. Mm. Yeah, I really, really like and resonate with what you're talking about here, Ken. And I think this is really important. And I think what you said uh, early in the interview was when a man asks a woman out, each step of the way, he risks rejection. And I think sometimes women forget that uh, because we're not the ones typically that are mm -hmm. moving things forward or or and making the next date or or um, asking for the next step, so to speak. And um, if a man's not getting clear signals, I think what we're talking about are not clear signals. I think sometimes a woman, because she is in that safe mode that you talked about, mm -hmm. she's not giving those clear signals. Yeah. So he, a man doesn't have a whole lot to go on. And why would he continue to make that risk, to take that risk of being rejected if he's not getting those clear signals? Yeah, absolutely. And please understand, just because you show up and you're doing what I'm recommending, being safer, it doesn't mean every guy is going to want to keep dating you. There's still going to be people that you're just not a match for. But here's what's going to happen. They're bound to go, Maybe they have another friend and they're like, you know, I had a date with this gal. She's really not my type. She's not my person that I'm looking for. But she was really great. Maybe you'd like to meet her. But I promise you, if you're showing up safe, 
and he's sitting there going, hmm, this was nice, he's not introducing you to anyone. That's never going to go any further because you were holding out on, like, it's funny because I, I hear women say this all the time where they're like, well, but I thought I'd, that I'd present that the next time we saw each other or I'd bring that up. That was like my next big thing I was going to present, like the extra special thing, right? So there's this myth that you're all like, you're going to have another chance. Well, I think we've all proven to ourselves, we don't get another chance all the time, right? First date, that was it. And then we wonder, well, how do they know? Because they thought you were bringing it. And you were really holding back. So bring it, put your cards on the table. See how it plays out. That's the only way you're going to know. And again, it's just being you. Show up and be authentic. Again, if you're not comfortable to where you can go out and be yourself, there's some other work that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. You're not really ready to show up. You're just going through the motions. So I think it's pretty clear how, how passionate I am about this because I see so many women that are trying to control it. Control comes from fear. If you're at a place where you're afraid of dating, you're not ready to date. You're not ready for the right guy. So there's something else has to happen. You've got to do some work on what's, what is going on. Are your X filters so big you can't see past them? And you're just terrified you're going to repeat that? You're not ready. Mm -hmm. I know you can all be sitting there going, oh my gosh, that must mean I'm not ready. I could have just made all of you think you can't date anymore. <laughs> not my point my point is going okay what am i what am i running into what are my fears what are my concerns why am i in that safe zone and i need some help what do i need to do to get some help with that because if you could have shifted it you would have mm -hmm. nobody wants to stay in a place of being uncomfortable and fearful and like they have to control everything that's not fun for anyone that's work that's why i hear people say oh my gosh it's so much work it's not a lot of work if you're not trying to control everything. Mm -hmm. When you're just flowing with it, it's, it's easy. So again, this is that point of going, getting honest with yourself. Yeah, theoretically, I'm ready for the right guy. I'm ready to be at the end. And here's a, a, a way you can look at it. Like think about being in a long-term relationship. It's kind of like running a race, right? So there's a start line, there's a finish line. Finish line is like, we have this committed relationship, we're rock solid. Now, most people just want to be at the finish line. Right. They just want to get at the end. Well, you can do that. You can skip being in the race. But if you do, you're going to be at the finish line and you'll be a spectator. You're not going to have actually finished. So you won't actually have gotten the prize. You have to do the entire race. That means you got to start at the beginning, which is first dates. And then you move on. Then you take the next step. But it's bringing that fun, bringing that joy. The person that starts the race, they're not sitting there going, oh, I can't believe I have to take this first step. They're like, cool, this is how I get to my goal. This is awesome. I have the opportunity right now to get to that goal. I'm in the game. And unless you're ready to really embrace the whole process, there's something that has to happen first. Mm -hmm. Well, this probably comes back to the, con the fear and control piece you're talking about. But another thing I hear women say so often is, you know, I just don't want to waste time. I don't want to waste time in the wrong relationship. I'm sure you've heard that one. And, or they say, um, I, you know, I, have this history of picking the wrong guy. And so I want to make sure I don't, you know, get involved mm -hmm. with someone. And it's almost like they're going to, they're going to, like you talked about, uh, interview someone, screen someone before they're going to open up. Yep. Because they don't want to take that risk of that happening again. And of course, then there's the, the, risk that we all feel which is that risk of rejection so you get all of those things layered on top of each other <laughs> yeah no those are all great and here's the thing 99 percent of the world is not going to be in love with you so just because you're not a match with somebody doesn't mean you're a horrible person it doesn't mean you're invalid oh my god I must not be lovable. This one guy didn't like me. Yeah, more people are not going to be in 
a match for you than R. So don't let the few times this happens decide to color everything. We take these exceptions and we turn them into rules. Well, I can't, I can't be open and honest because I'll get hurt. But you only get hurt because you decided it meant something more than it did. Mm -hmm. You've made it into the story of, oh my God, that must mean I'm unlovable or I'm a terrible person or I don't know how to date. No, it just means you weren't a match. Next. We got to get through that. We get caught up in the one or two or five things. I was working with a client the other day and she's telling me, you know, my ex-husband said this, this, and this, and that's why it's uncomfortable for me. I said, so your sample group is one. Granted, it was your husband, but it's still one. So one person, the way you acted didn't work for them. And you've decided it's universal, that that part of you is no longer safe or valid. And this is what we do. Mm -hmm. Self-preservation, right? Oh, I want to avoid that heat, that, that fear. Well, guess what? You're back in the avoidance mode. So what are you going to do? Create more people. You'll keep attracting the wrong guys. Yeah, because you don't believe you're lovable. If you're doubting yourself, if you're believing that, oh, it's just going to be the same. I got to figure out how to get through this. I don't want to get hurt again. What are you doing? You're looking for how you're going to get hurt. You're not, you have no attention on how exciting and fun and joyful it's going to be. And I'm, Michelle, I'm sure you've worked with this too. I've had women tell me they can't even comprehend that. Mm -hmm. Like you ask them to envision their ideal relationship and they are stuck. Like just the idea of it is paralyzing. Because yeah. why? Well, if I put it out there and it doesn't happen, that'll hurt more. Again, avoiding the hurt. What about the joy? What about the fun, the excitement, the thrill? We've totally forgot about that. Yeah. So it is. It's turning that around because there are, there's all those messages. I don't want this to happen again. I always date the wrong guys. Yeah. Self-fulfilling prophecies. Yeah. Yeah. It reminds me of this Brene. I think it's Brene Brown that said there's no intimacy without vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And so the truth is, um, I like that you're telling a lot of truth here today, Ken. I like, I like the truth where you said, so maybe 99% of the world is not going to fall in love with you. And that might sound like, wow, really? <laughs> There's not that many people who would fall in love with me. Well, 1% is still a real, is a pretty big sample if you compare the population of the world. But going into it, knowing that somehow I think is really advantageous when you kind of know, chances are, most of the people you date are not going to be your long-term partner, husband, whatever it is you're looking for. But someone out there is. And so somehow it's helpful to kind of know that and know that both people have to take that risk of some vulnerability in order to have the possibility of true intimacy, of true partnership. And yeah. so it's just a really powerful concept that we're talking about here. And I really appreciate you bringing it forward. And I just think that fear, uh, fear of all different kinds, really is a big part of what holds so many people back. But if we can let go of the fear and not take things so personally, this is another thing that you're talking about here, not take it so personally and create a story around it if someone's not your match. Yeah. Because you're exactly right, that's what happens. We go out on a date, we have an experience where maybe we like him more than he likes us or whatever. And it can happen in the opposite direction as well. But if that doesn't move forward, then in our minds we make up a story around it. Well, there must be something wrong with me. I'm too old, I'm too this, I must not be lovable blah, 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 blah. And like you said, it can be from a very small sample that we can arrive at these conclusions. Then the problem is when that story is created, we go out there and we gather evidence to back up our original story, which was based on a false premise to begin with. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I want to clarify something. When I was saying about the 99% of people aren't going to fall in love with you, I'm sharing that with you to help you let go of the story that it means more than it does. Because you can look at it this way. Would you rather have everybody like you on a surface level or have a handful of people that loved you completely right down to your toes? 
that knew you, that understood you, that appreciated you. That's what the choice is. None of that can happen. That handful of people won't even find you if you're holding back. Mm -hmm. If you're trying to make sure you don't get hurt. The hurt is because we decided it means something it doesn't. Right? It's like, I, I saw this once was a great example. The guy said, if somebody slaps you in the face, physiologically, the pain of that slap is over in a second. But we feel it ongoing because of the story we made up around it. Oh my gosh, this must mean that, must mean I was rude, must mean they don't like me. That's the pain we're feeling. It's not physiological anymore, it's mental. Same thing with, oh, he didn't call me back, now I have this whole story. If you just went, okay, next, he must not be a match. I can move on, because I still know I'm fantastic. I got so much to offer, and I'm bringing it. And I put it out there, I played my cards on the table. I wasn't sitting there going, well, I don't know, I won't tell you. I actually played the game full on. Now we know. Mm -hmm. So this is, it's a big shift. And, you know, if we're in that avoidance, I don't want to get hurt again. Nobody wants to get hurt. But the hurt is the story. Somebody, honestly, if somebody doesn't call you back, what is the hurt in that? You met the person once. That's a pretty tiny investment. Mm hmm but the big investment is how much energy you put into trying to control it. I was trying to make it work, so I failed. No, you didn't. Total success. You found out they're not a match. That's 100% success. You don't need to know the whys. All the whys you're going to do are going to make you decide, oh, that must mean I need to change. No, that's just that one person. Who knows? I was talking with someone the other day and they said they're incredibly allergic to cats. Like they can't even be in a house where a cat was. And, and people will be like, oh, we'll put the cat in the bathroom. And they're like, no, you don't understand. There's, I can't be, this doesn't mean cats are terrible or you're a terrible person. I literally will be in the hospital if there's a cat in the building. I can't go there. You don't know why that wasn't a match. It doesn't matter. All you're gonna do is make up a story if you find out why. So just kind of coming full circle here, uh, as far as the safe mode and safer mode in terms of dating, one of the irons, irony is, is that we think what keeps us safe, what protects us from being uh, hurt, rejected, not loved, et cetera, is us trying so hard to be safe because no one really gets that opportunity to fully see us, to really know who we are and to really see the authentic person because we're holding our cards so close to the vest, we're being so cautious to protect ourselves and to control things that no one really even gets to see us. So and it's, a, it's an ironic that what we think really keeps us safe from what we're trying to avoid is actually a big part of what keeps us having those kinds of experiences that we most might be most afraid of. Yeah, yeah. And, and a, a very simple way to look at this, and this is an absolute truth, you will never feel safer than when you are fully seen. Mm. And yet that's our fear. Yeah. So it's exactly what you're saying. Our fear is, oh, no, I got to guard against all these things. It's like, no, that's how you feel safe. I mean, think about being with your best friend. You feel totally seen, totally comfortable, not worried about being judged. That's the safest you will feel. That's the space you want to bring into a date or a relationship. Like, that's what you're looking for. But it's not going to happen as long as you're holding back. Mm -hmm. Well, and at the end of the day, you know, like when you were talking about, do you want to be loved by a few people right down to your toes? That's what people most deeply desire. They desire that kind of love where they can be safe to be fully real you know, what we consider to be our best qualities, our worst qualities, and everything in between can be seen and we can be fully accepted, appreciated, and that someone that loves us is really going to see us through those lenses of love, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. I was just working with a client last week and she said this. She said a great statement. She said, I want to be connected. I want deep connection. And all I'm finding is appreciation. Mm -hmm. And so we did some exploring. And what we find? 
she had these beliefs that said that, well, I'll show up completely once they've proven that they're safe. Because she had this fear of conflict. Fear of somebody having a disagreement would mean that suddenly she was a bad person and they wouldn't like her, as opposed to being able to go, well, there's going to be opposing views. That's normal. And even though she deeply, deeply desired that, that self-preservation mechanism was sitting there going, nope, just keep it on the surface. And as soon as it gets anything that's kind of there's, oh, maybe we're not in total alignment, leave the conversation. And so she was literally sabotaging the thing she really wanted. Mm-hmm. And you said it, you know, as far as it, it takes that, uh, that risk of being, you know, rejected. And I, I, I often tell people that I, I firmly believe the word love has been misspelled forever. It should have been spelled R-I-S-K. Because you can't have one without the other. You've got to risk. That's how somebody knows who you really are and go, wow, I had no idea. That's the coolest thing ever. Because oftentimes the thing that's most lovable about us is the thing we think we have to hide. Mm Mm-hmm. And it also makes us relatable and it makes it safe for someone else to share their more vulnerable parts of themselves as well. Uh, when we're not all just putting on the mask or the facade of what we think Mm -hmm. is acceptable. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. This is really, really powerful. I'm so glad we talked about this, Ken, and thank you for bringing this to the forefront because I think it's going to be really, really valuable to so many people. So safer mode, just before we begin to wrap up, is Mm -hmm. self-confidence. Let's see if I can remember these. Um, Authenticity, Mm -hmm. fun, Mm -hmm. um, excitement, Mm -hmm. and what's the R? Um, I can't remember the R. Receptive. Receptivity. Yes, that feminine quality of receptivity. So ladies... um, Think about this and really consider this because if you're not, if you're feeling ready for the end game but you're not getting up to bat so to speak if things aren't going so well on the front end this could be a key to opening all of that up. So Ken, thank you so much. It's been wonderful to connect with you and thank you so much for what you've shared today. My pleasure. It's always fun to be here and I I, I hope that this served everyone listening because it's it's vital if you want to get to the end game you've got to start at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, it was really important. And ladies, thank you so much and bye-bye for now.